The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, traders. Welcome to the uh, first uh, day here for our uh, Bookmap Pro Trader webinar series. Uh, all week long, we're going to have a professional trader uh, presenting and um, uh, really looking forward to it. Uh, we've had Scott Pulsini here uh, today. Well, we had him a few times in the past. Uh, we have him here again today. Uh, very popular uh, with you guys. So uh, let me just give a, a bit of a background here. If you're not familiar with him, he's been trading for over 20 years and uh, at a professional level uh, during the years of uh, 2002 to 2005, he was responsible about 10% 10, 10 of the trading of the S&P E-mini uh, futures volume, which is just mind boggling. Uh, and uh, anyway, now uh, Scott's focusing on uh, trading both equities and futures uh, and expertise and scalping and order flow, uh, innate ability uh, to be able to read that uh, very quickly and react very quickly uh, with the order flow and volume um, uh, price patterns. Uh, risk disclaimer, I need to go through that. Trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, here's our contact information here, bookmap.com, our Twitter, our email. Here's Scott's contact information here. Okay, now don't worry, you don't need to uh, write all this down. I'm going to uh, periodically put it into the chat box in GoToWebinar. So I'm putting it in right now. So you have access to it. This has Scott's website, his email, his Twitter account. Uh, he also has a trading room here with um, uh, uh, wetradedesk.com. Uh, and then also uh, Bookmap is a, I'm sorry, Scott is an educational partner here with Bookmap uh, and, uh, or affiliate, I should say. And this is special offers you can get for, for Bookmap through Scott. Okay. So again, these links are in the chat if you're interested in that. Uh, and other than that, though, let's, I'm just going to turn it right over to Scott and let him uh, take it away. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, awesome. Um, let's see here. I'm a presenter. Let's see. Let me know when you see my book map screen. Yes, I see it. Cool. Okay, great. Uh, thanks for having me once again. And I think this time it'll be a little smoother with my slides because I've figured out Google Slides. <laughs> um, never claimed to be a, a tech guy, but um, it's pretty easy. So anyway, um, I wanted to, you know, obviously there's a lot to go over in this hour, especially with the new, um, you know, the new book map uh, SI indicator add-on, <clears throat> which is absolutely incredible. And what I'm going to show you today is, you know, my past, my past webinars, I've, I've shown you, you know, screenshots and examples of, you know, of, of prior trades or prior action. Today, what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to touch on, you know, what the SI indicator is and how, how powerful it is. And then um, I'm basically going to jump into some live market action. I think traders um, like that a lot more where they can kind of see things really unfolding live um, just to show you how powerful this stuff is. Uh, so probably did that the last half hour, uh, maybe longer if I can get through this other stuff. But um, so just quickly, my history, I've, I've gone over it five different webinars now. So um, most people that have listened to me in the past know my history, if not. Uh, you can, um, on Twitter, you can see my, I was in a book called Enhancing Trader Performance by Dr. Dr. Brett Steenberger, who will come up in this conversation a little bit. But um, if you go to that, you can get the PDF of that book and I'm in the afterward and you can kind of read my history and I'm a kind of a rags to riches uh, story and then back to rags. So that's why I resonate to, with, with the retail trader nowadays, because I am a retail trader. I'm not the, you know, big multi-million dollar trader anymore. Um, but I'm on my way back and the way I'm, well, the reason I'm on my way back is because of book map, um, you know, number one, because of the, the ability to read order flow. So like I was talking about before, Dr. Brett has been, you know, an advocate, a cheerleader of mine for years and years and years. He sat behind me for a year and watched me trade. Um, that was my history back then. I, you know, I started in 2001. I worked at the border trade, Chicago border trade for four years as, as an ARB clerk. And then I moved to the screens and I was trading there and was, horrific when I first started and then one day watching order flow on the order book 
as you see here, this dome depth of market, um, I learned how to scalp futures and I learned how to read this order flow coming in the book. And there would be many, many days, I'd say 90% of my days, I wouldn't even have a chart up. I would just trade strictly from the, the dome, right? And I have one of my gifts was I have very fast mental processing skills. So I was clicking a mouse, basically playing a video game, video slash poker game every day based on order flow coming in the book. So I made, you know, millions of dollars. I made you know, over a three year period, I made almost $15 million for my firm um, and myself that we split. But then, you know, 2005, 2006, I, I couldn't make money anymore. And it went from literally overnight making millions that I, and I couldn't generate a profit. And then I started losing. And the whole reason was because the algorithms really started to take hold in the market. <clears throat> and um, that combined with the low volatility at the time, uh, just did, I, couldn't make money anymore. And I mean, I'm, most traders can attest to having something that works that goes away. Uh, I always thought my gift was there for good. Um, and, you know, I was, I was a young, you know, I was a millionaire by age 30. And I, I was just a young, dumb punk thinking that it was always going to be there. And I had a rude awakening, right? So, Fast forward to around 2013, I actually, I spent years trying to reinvent my style to, to be, you know, so I can compete at these markets and I was adequate, but I was never, I was never anywhere near world class. I mean, I was lucky to be making a little bit of money. I couldn't support my family though, uh, with what I was making. So I had to leave them, leave the industry in 2013. I had to go into medical sales um, just to support my family. And then fast forward to about a year and a half ago, Dr. Brett contacted me about the book map uh, and told me, you know, this is right up your alley. This is what you used to look at, and it's just in a different format. I think you would you would find this very uh, appealing. And the second I looked at it, I knew I was back. Like <clears throat> I knew there, were, I knew the 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 key to my getting back to becoming a million dollar trader was right here uh, with the book map, as far as understanding the volume. And so my whole <clears throat> my whole drive these days is. Of course, making myself money. I want to make money. I want to be a million dollar trader again, and I will be. But my other drive is literally helping the retail trader. I had somebody, and when we get into some of these setups, um, you're going to see what, what I'm talking about as far as like the, the iceberg indicator. But I've been posting a little bit of stuff on Twitter. I've, I've been on there very, just very recently. I got on there and I post on there. I, I literally had somebody ask me a couple of weeks ago. Um, he sent me a direct message asking me, why am I sharing my edge with the general public? Why, I, you know, he was bragging that he, he's known these big uh, fund managers and Tudor Jones and all these other people, and they're not even on Twitter. Why would I possibly get on Twitter and, and share my, my view or my edge? And <clears throat> my answer was because I have extreme animosity towards <laughs> the the algorithms, the, the hedge funds, the, the quant funds, as you can imagine, right? I mean, they basically, it's, it's equivalent to, you know, having somebody come in your house and stealing all your money and all your all your goods, right? All your, you're just ruining your family because that's what happened to me. So my drive is, again, obviously to, you know, make money, but I want to, I really enjoy helping the retail trader get on the same playing field as these big funds. And that's what Bookmap and its tools, it, it does for traders. And when I start showing you this stuff, you're gonna be like, okay, yeah, now now I understand. Now I understand why they come out and say, Goldman Sachs has made money made money last year, 198 out of 200 trading days, right? And everyone's like, well, what, how could that possibly be? Well, it could possibly be one, either they're cheating or they've got the tools that most people don't have. And it's the latter, obviously, I'm not, I'm not saying they're cheating. Um, <clears throat> But they have they've had these kind of tools for years, and now we have these tools, right? And I know it sounds pretty unbelievable, but once I start showing you some of this stuff, you're, you're gonna you'll be a believer. Um, and why it's even more relevant is because this is what I used to do, right? These games that I'm gonna show you with the size and liquidity, and you're you're gonna this is exactly what I used to do, so I know what works, and I know I know what the games are playing. Again. It wasn't able to see these games just from the dome or the order book before, but now you can. So, um, and then the other thing I wanted to touch on is, <clears throat> you know, all these past webinars have basically been me using Bookmap and a little bit of the Thinkorswim platform, form, which is free. You know, I've been showing some VWAP stuff, and um, but I was introduced by one of my. So I do a little mentoring on the side. If you go to my website, you can see all that. If anyone, if anyone wants to contact me for one-on-one -on -one stuff, I do that as well, um, and I have some products on there, but. 
Um, I had one of my mentees introduce me to uh, TAS Market Profile. So it's TASMarketProfile.com. I'm going to show it here in a second. Um, and it was kind of like a book map moment for me where the minute I saw it, I knew this is this is the last piece I needed, right? So bar chart, you can glean a lot of information as far as areas. And then when you incorporate book map, it makes you, you know, a, a, an efficient trader. TAS Market Profile is like a bar chart on steroids, right? <clears throat> Just like... You know, the stuff I'm going to show you today is like book map on steroids when they've added this add on this uh, SI MBO indicator. So I'm using now I'm using both in conjunction. And if you've noticed anyone following me on Twitter, you can see that I I've been posting the setup in book map and with certain levels in the TAS um, market profile indicators. And I've always said you can probably become a proficient trader, uh, a profitable trader trading just off order flow with book map. But then when you know certain areas that make sense to you um, or, you know, using these market profile areas, it, it that's when you become a powerful lethal trader, right? So the reason I gravitated to the market profile, I've always been a believer in it because it's what the market is, right? The market is volume based on price based on volume, right? So that's what a market profile shows you. The reason I've never really been, you know, 100% uh, advocate of it is because a lot of times, um, you know, I'll show you this on the charts when I, when, I, when I present them, but, you know, like when you're drawing the the, um, the market profile areas and the value areas, it's very subjective and it's very artsy for me. And I don't like, you know, one trader will cut it off one area and people that know market profile know what I'm talking about. Again, I'll show it a little bit. They'll, they'll, sh they'll cut off one area here on, on a market profile area and then another one won't. And I, I don't like that. I want to see what the, you know the masses see or i want to see like what the what the big money sees so um that's why i never really got engaged in it but then when i started to see this these TAS market um, profile uh, boxes which i'll uh let's see i'll show here <clears throat> once i started seeing this stuff displayed uh it made all the sense in the world because this isn't just hocus pocus uh lines on a chart you know like a lot of these indicators are all this is doing is it's just drawing you mini market profiles based on um the time frame right so you know there's a 10 minute 30 minute 60 minutes what i use um and it's just drawing mini market profiles so when you use this in conjunction with book map volume again you are you are more informed than 99.9 .9 of the traders out there so Anyway, this this is why I um, I started using this when my mentee introduced me to it, and then I met Steve from uh, Taz Market Profile. Uh, he owns the site, and he he's an educator in his own right. Um, pretty incredible. He does live live. Um, he's in the chat room as well. Um, let me show you this real quick. Let's put this up here. All right, so just briefly, so this is this is the TAS stuff that I was just showing you. Um, if you go on their site, uh, I'm now now working with them just because what's that one commercial where they said I liked it so much I became a, a customer. <laughs> so that that's exactly what it is. I mean, I liked it so much um, I teamed up with them. And the other reason is I, I've had so many inquiries of do I have a chat room? Do I have a trade room? And it's it's just been such a flurry. I've you know again I've only been doing these bookmap webinars for about since last November-ish. And it's just been so much. I just don't have time to set everything up and then do my mentoring and everything else. So, you know, this stuff, again, the only thing I ever promote are things that I personally use as a trader that I think help the retail trader, right? And again, that's why I've, I've joined up with them. So um, this is the site, it's Taz Market Profile. Um, you know, they have special discounting, put my name at the end of it. And then, um, this is the we trade desk so this is uh this is also incredible where i i will be in this i'm in this room i just started last week i'm in this room three days a week twice a day it's just a start or probably be more going forward um with live commentary like i'm kind of going to do with you guys here in the last half hour where i'm going over actual market setups actual what i'm what trades i'm taking what i'm seeing um so again i've had so many requests for that and it was just a perfect a synergy to to you know team up with taz and then steve again he's been in this business for you know 20 years as well and he started the site i think about 10 years ago but he does his education on the days that i'm not doing it so and that's just on strictly trading off the taz market market profile so when you combine the two you'll be a very 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 lethal trader so um onto the uh onto the 
CME, MBO stuff. Let me back up here for a second. Um, any questions before I start, Bruce? Do a little break from talking anyway. Uh, let me take a quick look here. Um... <clears throat> No, not really. Um, people are just requesting some of those symbols to take a look at. Yeah, I know. Okay. I know that you've got them lined up already. So uh, we'll take a look. Yeah. And, and the other thing too, um, I forgot to mention. So Bruce and Bookmap, they don't have any affiliation with Taz, right? So please don't send Bruce and Bookmap questions about what I'm showing you with these Taz market profile boxes um, or anything I'm showing in the market profile because they have nothing to do with it, right? They, they have their site. This is a different site. If you have questions, you can email me. He has my information. He has all my information at the beginning of the, of the presentation or TAS. Um, but please, the my book map has nothing to do with TAS as of right now. So just please don't, um, trail Bruce the questions because he won't be able to answer them. Thank you, Scott. Um, <laughs> yeah, no problem. I forgot to mention that. So, um, you know, in my prior webinars, we've talked about. Let me just bring up the slides here first instead, instead of moving, moving market. This is not confusing. Um, so we've talked about liquidity, resting liquidity in the market. So this type of thing here, and again, I'm gonna go back through these slides and show you guys some stuff before I go live. But so this resting liquidity, for those of you that don't, don't know book map or are new to it, um, I'm just gonna touch on this briefly. This is the stuff that, was available when I first started using Bookmap, which I thought, which I knew I was back just using this stuff, right? So all this is, is this is representing this order book in graphical form. So when you see this, again, I'm I'm red, green, color deficient, I'm colorblind, so I changed my bubbles. So, you know, when you guys have, if you have Bookmap, you're probably gonna have red, green, I can't tell the difference. So my colors are different, but basically everything else is pretty standard um, as far as what I'm using on the charts that you would see. Uh, but the point is, if I make mistakes with the colors, forgive me, it's because I'm colorblind. So anyway, um, these these liquidity levels are actual big orders in the book relative to that market, right? So I mean, you look over here and you're like, well, wait a second, this is you know like a this is a 23 lot or 33 lot, 35. That's not a lot. I mean, compare. But when you look at this, this kind of the algorithm book map uses, it, it is a lot, right? And you can see how the market responds to this resting liquidity in the book. So the, that's what's visible. What is now, and then also the dots quickly, the dots are, all the dots are, are, are the bubbles are market orders. So aggressive buyers or sellers that are going to the market. That's all, that's all this is, right? So a lot of people look at this and they just, it, it feels like it's overwhelming, like it's so confusing. It's really not when you really break it down. It's, it couldn't be more simple actually. So these are just market orders. So I use for my settings, um, I'll show that here quickly. Um, so for my settings, so you right click on volume dot settings. Um, I use volume Delta 3D bubbles and here are my settings. Again, this is basically um, the default, uh, but I use the, the Delta, which shows me the difference between the buyers and the sellers. Cause that's what I want to see. That's important to me, right? So when you see big blue bubbles, that means, doesn't mean there were no sellers there. That means there were that many more buyers than sellers. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and let's bring this back. Um, so what is new in Bookmap is what they call the uh, SI indicator. So it's a stop iceberg indicator. So the CME has, so this is literally from the website if you want to read about it, right? So it's called market market by order information where they used to use market by price information. So here's here's, it kind of explains what both are. Market by price was um, shockingly what every other software data provider has right now, which is not, <laughs> when you look at the difference, so again, this is like market, MBO is like MBP on steroids, right? So MBO is breaking down these orders um, into individual order IDs. Again, you can see all of this stuff here. Um, market by price, one was only the first 10 levels of the market, but I don't think it says it here, but again, you can go on the site and read it. It's only showing you the first 10 levels up, first 10 levels below uh, of, of the market, which is fine, but you want to know like where resting liquidity is far away, from, far, far away from the market, things like that. So again, Rhythmic and, and is the only software provider that is offering this MBO information, which Bookmap then dissemin disseminates and gives you 
these the stop iceberg indicator that I'm going to show you. Um, so again, you can go on the site. I don't want to get into too much into this. I'm not that technical. I, again, I, I don't need to know what it is. I need to know that it works, right? Just like, again, I was just the analogy of a light. You know, you can either dive into why, why the light bulb works or you just know it gives you light, right? So it's the same thing here. Um, so if you want to learn more, go to their website. Bookmap also has, I don't have it on here, but they have a um, uh, SI indicator. Just just Google Bookmap SI indicator and there'll be a, um, in their blog, it's, it's an explanation. Um, actually, let me see. Yeah, this is what it looks like right here. So literally they have a blog and it goes through the advantages and example, great examples, settings. It explains um, what the uh, settings are for what I'm going to show you. There's some exponential reset. I use exponential. Again, go in and read about this. I'm not going to sit here wasting time explaining this. Um, all you need to know is that it works and it's the most powerful thing I've ever seen in, in futures trading. Um, uh, this, so this is just a little more. So this is what we need to know, right? So order IDs are unique per order, right? And consistent for the life of the order. So what, what the CME is putting out there now, and they've been doing it for three years. And I'm, that's the only thing I'm upset about that I haven't taken advantage of this, of this information earlier. I mean, granted, Bookback didn't really have it, um, but now they do. So, but anyway, these orders, these stop and iceberg orders have unique order IDs. So that's why they can disseminate, book map being they, can disseminate whether the orders are stops, icebergs, market orders. Every time you put an order in the book, it's got a, a unique ID to it. So then they take that information, they run it through their algorithm, and then they present it in, in graphical form to give you incredible edge, incredible levels. So again, this is all on the uh, CME website. Just, just a, a, a bit of a um, more uh, explanation here. Um, it's not that every order, I mean, the uh, market by order data it has it has more data uh but uh, it's it's not saying like you know this is a stop this is an iceberg um but we are able to determine it with the market by order data uh it's it's not uh, it, you know it, it's our insight it's our uh proprietary right. kind of information on that i just want to make make it clear that uh, uh it, it's not you know, they're not broadcasting you that information. Right. Yeah. You you, you could you can go to the CME website and get the data and then just decide yourself what's what. That's what Bookmap why Bookmap's invaluable, right? They disseminate the information, like I said, and they dis display it for us as traders, right? So again, this is information that these big big houses, paper funds have had. I'm, I'm convinced. I know they've had it for at least three years, and I think I'm pretty convinced they've had it for years and years and years. And I'm pretty convinced that they've gotten it from various sources that, you know, it, it's pretty obvious. But anyway, um, the point you need to know is you're on the same playing field now, and that's pretty exciting for most traders that want to make money. So here's a couple um, examples. This was, uh, the, actually, this was Friday. The, um, again, just the market never goes down. Everything's fine. You know, the unemployment numbers weren't as bad as they thought. They were actually much better than they thought. This was the open. I'm on, um, I'm in uh, Arizona, so I'm on Pacific time. So this was the number um, blows you know, straight up. So you can see here what happened here is, so th this is the stop, stop and iceberg information, right? So in, on my chart, uh, stops are orange, icebergs are blue. So quickly stops are, I hope any trader listening to this knows what a stop is, because if you don't, then you're, you're going to be blown out here very soon because you have to have stops in your, you know, when you put an order in the book, a stop is just where you say, okay, you put it in after you put your trade on and say, okay, if this trades at this level, it automatically will. So say if I, you get short and you put your stop here, the minute it triggers that price, your, your, your order is triggered automatically without you having to manually click on it. I mean, everyone knows what a stop is, I'm assuming. Um, <clears throat> the icebergs are, you know, some people don't know what they are. They're very simple um, when, you, when you know. All it is is basically hidden orders in the book, right? So this stuff, that you see in this orange, that's visible liquidity in the book. Now, this stuff is not visible. So an iceberg, they have to display a certain percentage of their order called called like the tip of the iceberg, right? So I, I, I don't know the exact percentage, I'm guessing like 10% of the order. So again, when the market comes to the, to the order in the book, you see a hundred lot, behind it is another 900, right? So there would be a, that would be a thousand lot iceberg. So all they have to display is a small percentage of that order and then the minute it starts getting traded into, the rest of it appears. So there's many reasons to have icebergs. You know, the, the main reason is 
a lot of the, the big money they can't they can't put their order huge orders in the order book if they, you know if they, if they put a big order in the order book they, there's so many algorithms that are designed to run away from those orders right so it's like they'd be chasing up price every time they did that so one of the reasons they do it is so they can kind of hide their their intentions without an algorithm you know crushing them and running running away where they have to chase the price um, there's other reasons also that they may use icebergs, but it doesn't it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the reason is. It doesn't matter who it is. All you need to know is that they're there, right? <clears throat> so, you know, a lot of times, especially the last webinar I did when I first introduced this, um, and I, again, I've just been using this for a couple months, but the minute I saw it again, like everything else I'm showing you, I, the light went on. It's like, oh my God, this is incredible. Um, what I was showing in the other one were icebergs where you always wanted to be on paper side. Basically, when you see, so say for instance, this was um, going up and you see a sell iceberg and then you see it fail, that's a great short signal. It still is. But my point here is paper is going to be wrong sometimes. My other, my, and when they're wrong, that's fine. Again, you don't care if they're right or wrong. You care what that area is, where that area is, that they are wrong, where they took a stand. That's what that's the relevant information, relevant information you gather from this, as well as stops. So in the prior um, uh, webinar I did, that was I think it was like April 17th or something. You can Google that, just Google Bookmap um, webinar or YouTube. You can find it. I did with Dr. Brett actually, but in there, I refer to the stop runs as dumb money because it usually is. It's usually the uninformed retail trader puking out their position into the smart money, the informed money, which is kind of what happened here, even though it didn't work out in the paper's favor, right? So what you see here is a huge stop run and I put the values next to here and you can see here, it's all, it's based graphically, uh, it's represented graphically too. So the orange is the orange. So you can see here, like the spike was right near a thousand. You can you can glean this information just by glancing, but I, I put these in just so you get the exact amount um, because it's important to know what the amounts are because every stop run isn't meaningful. Right, and, and especially in different markets. So, 825 in the E mini is is a lot different than a stop run in gold. Right, gold. Uh, if you see a hundred loss stop run, it's a lot in that market. Right. So, the whole point is you need to learn what your thresholds are in each in each market. And I'm actually releasing a product this week. I've had a lot of inquiry about this as well. Uh, educational product that's going to goes over specifically the SI indicator. It goes over. 14 different futures markets, the thresholds that are important as far as how much you need to see to make it a relevant area, uh, as well as exact certain setups. We'll go over a couple today, but there's like six or seven setups that you can use in your trading. Um, but that'll be posted you know, sometime this week. I'll, I'll put something out on Twitter, and, um, but I've had a lot of people inquire about that. So anyway, so these are the stop runs um, that are firing off here, right? So again, Usually, I'd say my guess, I don't have exact, exact statistics and I've only been watching this for a couple of months, but in my experience, stops in the E-mini, if you get over 500 stops, it's very relevant. If you get over seven, 700 icebergs, it's very relevant. So in this situation right here, this was the number that came out. You see paper took a stand, it blew right through, and then the stop run. The thing is, the stop run held and paper got blown out. So you can see when it pulled back here, it pulled back right into that, this area, the top of this area, and that that's where it, it took off from, right? So you're gonna see a lot of times when these areas get blown through, it's just like a retest, just like if you're looking at a bar chart, right? If you're looking at a, a balanced area that it breaks down from, so many times it'll come back and it'll test that area before finally going. And there's common sense behind that, right? It's because traders are caught holding their breath waiting for it to come back. So pretend you're this big trader here. Say say it was one trader that sold a thousand icebergs that just got literally run over for 20 points, right? Now, and again, I'm saying this because I know this happens because I used to do this, right? I used to be able to put on, you know, 3,000 E-mini contracts at a time. And I, it's a sad story that I always tell it's when I had 3,000 on, if I ever had 3,000 on, it was because I was wrong because I was defending my position. So what would happen is, so say this is me as this big trader, I get run over for a thousand lot. The thing runs, you know, 15, 20 points in my face and I'm about to puke and I'm just praying, praying it comes back anywhere near this area so I can scratch my trade. And that's what this market action is, right? I mean, this isn't a great example because it didn't come that far anyway, but that's what it is. When you see a retest, that's what it's retesting. It's retesting these areas that people were wrong, that they're just getting out of their trade and scratching their trades, right? So. It's a little, I'm getting a little in detail there, but again, just realize as I show you what, what's going on here, and I'm gonna show you some live examples too. Um, so 
this was a stop run, 787 stops fired off into almost a thousand icebergs. Retested again, here's another stop run, 896 right through, held. Another stop run right here, held. So again, stop runs are usually, you can fade them, but you're only fading them if they get back below that area. If it holds, you know, I call this a stop and hold. If it st the stop run happens, occurs, and then it holds that area, that is a great place to get long. So why this is important is, again, you can trade just off of this chart and, and make informed decisions, but when you add in the TAS stuff and the TAS boxes, now you're on the right side of the market, right? So you wanna to try to eliminate, as a trader, especially if you're newer or new to TAS or new to, new to, to BookBamp, you wanna to try to eliminate one side of the market, right? So, you know, when you start seeing, so this was the number, this is that big blue, those blue bubbles I showed you at the, at the number. Um, in my TAS charts, I, I don't wanna be confusing here, my TAS charts are based on central time, my book maps based on Pacific time, I just haven't changed it. But all you need to know is this is the number. So you see it blow through here, right? So this this had blown out of a 10 minute TAS box, market profile box. This had blown out of a 30 minute and it blew out of a 60 minute. So my point being is you do not wanna be short this that market, right? So you're looking for longs. So this is where this comes into place. And now you know, fundamentally by the TAS boxes, you wanna be long, right? Now you have a bias. Okay, where do I get long? Well, where you get long is where you see these big outsized orders come in and hold, right? So you could have been long, you, it blows through, comes back as soon as you start seeing blue. I mean, usually you'll see some red, this is all blue. You can get long right here. You see another stop run. You see them trying to sell, try to sell. As soon as you see blue again, you're in again. Here's another stop run. It looks like it's gonna sell off. You see blue, you're in again. You can, again, we're, all, we're, we're, we're hypothetically being long this entire time, right? And I'm just showing you areas that you can be long. You're basing it all on what's happening in these relevant areas where this large volume fired off. Here's another one, huge stop, almost a thousand stops, right again, right? It just held above it. There's no, so again, if you were to see, say you're long from down here and now you, you're like most traders, you stop looking at the chart, you're looking at your P&L and you're like, holy shit, I'm up you know, five grand. I, I, I need to get out of some of these. You don't need to get out of anything until you see a reason to get out, either a TAS resistance area or or something in the, the actual volume that's tra that, that's occurring, right? Th this is what this affords you. This affords you to stay in your trades for very huge profit because there's no reason to get out of this. There is no reason to ever get, say you got lucky, you got long and right when this pop, you're in this, you're, you're not getting out until a stop run is wrong or you see some big sell icebergs coming in and they're wrong or buy icebergs being wrong. And again, I'm gonna show you this stuff. I don't wanna be confusing, but again, it's the area not necessarily, you know, whether it's a buy or sell iceberg or stop run. So the stop run blows through again, say you're still long, you're still in this trade. If this would have, if you would have seen a big blue bubble and then red immediately below where the stop run, that tells you, okay, there's no real money behind it. That was a retail stop run. I've got to be ready to get out of some of this trade, right? And I post, posted some of these examples last week on uh, Twitter where uh, I think I was 3123 area. I saw a stop run just like this, but it wasn't a continuation. It stopped run and then it was immediately below, below it. And my exact words were, I would be wary of being long this area because this big buying wasn't real big buying. It was retail traders puking, right? So there's a difference between a stop run that holds or a stop run that fails. I'm gonna show you that right here. So then look over here, look at this final stop run. It was a, a buy stop run and you see red bubbles. So what does that tell you? Look at the difference between this stop run and the bubbles versus this stop run, this stop run, this stop run. You see the stop runs are running through people. Now all of a sudden, not only is there a buy stop run that is not showing up as a blue bubble, now you, you're getting participants, market participants hitting the bid, selling market orders. So when you, again, this is a stop run that not only Usually it's blue and fails. This one was red and failed. That's like a double whammy. That's that's a great setup where you can get short. The minute it gets below this stop run area, you're short, your stop right above here. So you're risking, you know, if you waited, if you waited to down here, you'd be risking. I mean, again, this isn't live, so I can't give you the exact price. I think it was like around 97. Um, and then you're risking above this area. So yeah, you're risking 13 points um, for this exact example. But most of the time you're getting you're getting areas that are, uh, you're only risking two, three, four points in the mini S&P, 
to, to catch a 20, 30 point run, right? And so in the chat room on Friday, I actually pointed out this exact, in the we, uh, we Trade Desk uh, chat room, I pointed this out live to the members where this had just fired off, came here, retested, just like I was showing you here about the retest, right? Same, same principles, retested, failed. And then what I said is my next area, my target area is where the last big stop run went up, was right around 80 to 85. And that's exactly, I don't have it on here. That's it. That market never went higher the rest of the day. And the market sold off right into this exact area at the end of the day. And I based that on the order flow and I based it on, so you can see here, this was that spike stop run. Immediately Taz drew a box, which now gives you another frame of reference where you can be getting short or staying short as long as it doesn't get back above this, this 10 minute box, 30 minute box, 60 minute box. Again, now you're using everything in conjunction and now you have a very high probability trade on, right? So again, it traded down. Actually, this was the end of the day here. You can see traded straight down, down here. And then you can see the support coming in on the TAS level. So again, if you're short, you know, you know that was a prior stop area. You can use that in conjunction with a support area in the TAS boxes. So these boxes, all these boxes are the blue, and I changed my colors again because I'm colorblind. The blue is support, a support area. Mm -hmm. The white is point of control, which the most volume occurred at in this box. The red is resistance, right? So again, you're using these in conjunction when you're using your volume and these, these areas, support resistance areas, you can be a deadly trader, right? You're informed. Most people don't have this information. That should make everyone very excited. Um, so this is, any questions there, Bruce? <clears throat> no, not, not, not quite yet. I mean, um... Uh, just people are, are uh, asking a lot of uh, questions that uh, I've been answering here, I've uh, been able to answer, but nothing uh, quite specific yet to um, setups and what you were, exactly you're looking for, um, I guess, because you're explaining all that. <laughs> so, okay. um, yeah, but I'll let you know. Okay. Um, and then, you know, for newer viewers, this is all recorded too, so you can go back, the book map will post it sometime today, and you can go back and watch this. I'm going to try to get through this stuff quickly, though, so I can get into the live stuff. This was gold on, again, this is Friday, just show you, I'm not just, you know, cherry picking from last three months, the best situations. This is literally from Friday. So this is gold, right? So you can see, let's, let's go to the TAS chart first. So you're, you're looking at TAS, you're not, again, we're eliminating one side of the market with TAS, right? This is breaking down from the 10 minute balance box area boxes, the 30 minute here, the 60 minute. My point is you are not looking long especially at the beginning of these moves, right? But I'm gonna show you how powerful, um, you know, the, the iceberg stuff is <clears throat> where the market definitely does react, right? So say you didn't have TAS and say you're looking to get long, you think the sell-off's overdone, right? You can be using these icebergs just for a, a, a reversion trade, you know, a type of a, um, a fade trade. So here, you know, the sell-off occurs here, you see the stop run, the dumb money puke, you see by icebergs here. I didn't put this iceberg because it wasn't that much. I mean, 100 is 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 a lot, pretty close to it, worth worth paying attention to in gold. But when you get in the 200 range for either stops or um, icebergs, th that's, that's very high for this indicator, right? So my point is you get the stop run, the dumb money, and then look at this, boom, pops up, right? So if you're short, so say you got short on the break of the test boxes, you could be getting out, getting out of piece. You're not out of anything until, I mean, it broke blue right through this rust in liquidity. You're still in it. You think you're golden. The minute you see the stop run and it doesn't hold below it, like we were showing in the other examples where it held above, you get out of some, right? Or get out of all, whatever you want to do. It comes all the way back. And I, and I guarantee you, this is at the bottom of the TAS box. I just, I don't have it here. I can show you here shortly. Um, 1694. Um, where was that at? Yeah, it was somewhere around here. But anyway, that that's not what I'm important for this. What I'm showing you here. Um, again, if you if you want to just catch the you know if you're looking long, you can have been long. This is what uh, this is a hundred tick move. <laughs> no, this is ten bucks in gold, just bouncing off of this. Comes down again. Here's another iceberg. Took a stand immediately. Rejection, right? So again, it doesn't mean you're getting long because, like I said, for this certain setup example, we're looking for shorts, right? So, you know. If you're short, you may want to get out of some when you see these relevant areas. But the point is, you can see once, so the market popped, this was like a 60 tick pop. Once it got below this area, 
boom, right? And it doesn't stop again until it hits the next iceberg, another pop, right? So when, when someone's looking at a bar chart, these are the moves that everyone gets frustrated with, right? You're short, you gotta withstand this nonsense where you're just, you're being tortured, right? And this is one of the reasons I always gravitated to scalping in the first place was because I could not handle mentally being short, thinking, oh yeah, you know, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make 20 grand on this trade. Oh, nope, I'm sure not. Oh, wait, here it goes. Nope, it's not going now, right? I mean, every trader could attest to this, but when you know why it's making these moves, these waves, these rotations, they call them, instead of just looking at a, a bar chart and saying, well, yeah, we're rotating. This is telling you why you are rotating. That is huge information. If anything, just for your mental sanity to, to not be not be pulling your hair out like you think you got your huge winner, which every trader can attest to this. At the end of the day, so you're the trader that gets out on the rotation. You were short. You end up making 30 ticks when you had a target of 100. You get out. You get you know you get basically blown out because you're you're afraid of these moves. And then by the end of the day, you look at the market and you, you stop watching it because you're so frustrated. And you see it went down. You know. 200 ticks you're like damn it this is exactly what i thought was going to happen every trader that is listening to this could attest to this i guarantee you the point is if you know why the market is rotating it gives you confidence to stay in the trade or re-enter right so say you're short you see the stop run it fails you can get out and you say okay when it blows back through this area i'm back in right comes here you see the stop you see another stop by uh, by icebergs come in Okay, I'm out. As soon as you see some aggressive buying, okay, I'm out. If it trades back below this area, I'm back in. You're back in. Here's another one. Boom. As soon as I see buying, I'm out. If it trades back below, I'm back in. So you would have been back in here, but then it hit another iceberg. As soon as you see buying right here, I'm out. If it trades back below, I'm back in. Do you see, do you see what I'm doing here? It's like, it makes it so much easier. Instead of sitting here, getting tortured, watching these rotations, you can find reasons to get out. And then it might cost you five, 10 ticks, but then you get back in, you know, when, when it re-engages. So you can see every time it blew through this area, these, these, these icebergs that tried to take a stand, it was meaningful. And then finally, you know, it, it popped. And then when it broke this area here, it was gone. And then when it, it comes back here, it, it actually, it, it, it stalls. The other thing, and then it ends up going up the rest of the day. But the point is you would have caught a nice run. And so right here, you might be saying, well, why would I get out right there? And again, using TAS in conjunction, look what happened. You get this move down, it kind of kind of looked like it was going to support. And then when you start using this with the stuff I just showed you with the stop, um, those icebergs, it couldn't hold, went down. And then when this finally drew a new box on the 10, on the 30, on the 60, here's your support area. So, you know, if you're if you're looking and then this stuff is a whole nother ball game. Again, you can learn all this on the TAS website. This is basically when you see the magenta, it means that the trend may be ending, so it would be alert. So when you use this stuff with these boxes being drawn, you know, now, now you have a reason to get out. If you're not seeing something in the volume, right? So right here, you didn't see anything fire off. I mean, you see some liquidity. I mean, so back to the basics of Bookmap, another reason you could have gotten out is say you don't have TAS, you weren't using TAS, it blows through this liquidity, it tries to get above, doesn't, and the minute it gets back above this liquidity, now you can be out of your trade, right? So you're using these also the visible liquidity to help you judge when to get in, when to get out as well. Um, I know I'm, I'm all over the place here. I'm just trying to cover this stuff quickly. Um, but the other thing too, which I've covered in prior webinars is these markets move to liquidity. It, it is opposite of what a common sense person would look at. And they would look at, so say they would look at a chart before all this occurred. Say you're up here and you see this, you see this, you see this. You're like, oh, look at all this bid liquidity. This this market's going up. I mean, they're look at all this support. It's the opposite, right? These are, this is the big money that wants to get filled. The longer it's in here, the more they want to get filled, the more they're going to make this market come into the liquidity, right? Again, I know this because I used to play this game. I used to put my bids in and I would wait for my opportune moment, then I would start hammering, hammering bids, selling, 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 and then I then I would get out, right? I would I cause a flurry of activity into my resting orders, which is this, and then I would get out. That's all this is. So when you see liquidity coupled with, you know, once it starts breaking down on these task boxes, and then you know where the liquidity is resting, you know where this market's heading. You, you have a very, very good indication. You have a very high percentage, I would say 80% or more from my experience that you're going into the majority of these liquidity levels. Then what happens after, so say say we got out 
um, you know, at the bottom of these task boxes and when it broke that resting liquidity I just showed you. Now look what, what, what this did. So this is the bottom of the task boxes. Again, there was nothing on the stuff indicator, but it, you know, the liquidity got back above. Now look, oh, let's let's put in, let's be the big house and put in our, our orders. And then we're gonna make sure that the market trades in every single one of them by the close. I mean, look, look at that. <laughs> this, is, this is why having 99% of traders do not have this information. So say you were looking to get long gold and you waited, you waited, and then you saw the bottom of the task box. You saw it clear this prior liquidity. Now you're in and it's playing these games. And then you start seeing this stuff stack. You're like, okay, now I know where we're going. And then you watch how it reacts in this liquidity and it trades through all of it by the end of the day. So um, last example, before I show some live stuff, this was the yen. Um, again, when a market looks like this, I call it the Christmas tree. It is completely algo ridden, right? These are algorithms putting in pulling, putting in pulling size. You don't usually wanna be participating in a market that you are begging to get whipsawed in because that's all this is happening here. But why this is relevant is, you just wait. Now look at this. This is the entire day. The only two areas that these icebergs and these were sell icebergs, meaning paper was trying to fade, you know, as them came up, they were trying to stay short, right? Because th these were sell. Again, if it's below zero, they're sell. If they're above, it's a buy. As it came down into them, they tried to sell and they were wrong. Came down here again. They tried, they put more icebergs in. Wrong again. This was the low of the day. You look at it on TAS, you know, again, this, you may not be, you're obviously, I wouldn't be personally looking for a long, but once it starts to draw its boxes in the 10, in the 30, in the 60, and then you use your real-time volume areas where paper is wrong. Again, paper's not always right. When they're wrong, it's still a, it's still a relevant area, and you know where you can be long, but you know, you use the TAS boxes. Okay, I'm getting long. I know the support from that. And I know this is a support area here where it shouldn't go back below this area. If it goes back below, then you're wrong. But you're not risking it much. And look at the trade that you catch it by the end of the day. So that's, uh, I went through that stuff pretty quickly. Um, again, it's pretty self-explanatory. The more you look at this stuff, this happens in every market. Again, the course I'm putting out, you're going to see 14 different markets that it's the same pattern in every market. It's not the same. Obviously, you can see here, this was um, 90, 290 lots that fired off there. And you would think to yourself, oh, that, that's not a big iceberg. It doesn't matter what you think it is. It's, I don't know why this isn't showing this without switching, but this was 90 and 90. Um, it was relevant because it was most of the day. That's all you need to know, right? So that's my examples there. Any questions, Chris, before I get into live stuff? Um, yeah, so a uh, question here about um, uh, entries here. Uh, do you enter with market orders? Um, and uh, does the market, when it's uh, moving too fast, uh, do you use, uh, or too fast to use limit orders, or do you enter on pullbacks? Uh, that, you know, kind of a, um, entries, exits, and trade management question here. Yeah, I mean, it obviously depends on the area and the setup. I mean, here, here we're, we're live now, right? This, this is a, a live market ES. This was the morning I pointed this out in the trade room. I was in there this morning. We, tra we trade desk room, pointed this exact thing out here. Now look at this, this was pre-market. So remember, so in, in the, I don't think I mentioned this, but again, the threshold in the E-mini, I might have, I can't remember what I just said, but in the E-mini, the thresholds are, if you see above 700 icebergs, that's a lot. If you see above 500 stop runs, the orange, that's a lot, right? This is a 997 lot by iceberg before the open. That is a ton. That would be relevant of like a 2,000, 3,000 lot iceberg regular trading hours. That is telling you this is a very relevant area, right? So you can see it comes up, there's resting liquidity that's acting as resistance. Then you get a buy iceberg as it starts to try to sell here. You can see the iceberg, whoever put this iceberg in, they, they were like, okay, I think we're, I'm gonna buy here, we're, we're going through. It was immediately wrong. There's your short signal. So back to that original question, you see this iceberg file, file, fire off, the minute you see aggressive market selling, you're in, you're in here, your stop goes above here. Even if this liquidity wasn't here, it's a great trade, but now you have the benefit of knowing where a big iceberg that was wrong, fired off on top of wrestling liquidity, that once that is kind of defending the area too, because it's already up here. You know, again, like I said, it will gravitate to liquidity, but we're already here. So now this is kind of a defense right here. So you have a resting liquidity, 
and a stop run, the minute you see engaging on the sell side, you're in. So you're selling at 3209 ish and you put your stop at, you know, even you can go right above this where the stop got pummeled or you put it above the liquidity. So you're risking three and a half points to make, you know, we went, <laughs> we went all the way down here. So you're risking, you know, to make 15 points. That's a five times, five time ratio on your, on your trade, right? So you can see here as this came back live, this is not a coincidence. This is where this market stopped. Look right here, buying right where this is. So I'm not saying that this trader held on this long and waited to get out, but the point is you're seeing, you know, if you're looking at a bar chart, you're saying, and I'll show you what this looked like on Taz, there's also a signal there, but if you're just looking at a regular bar chart, you're saying, okay, well, this is resistance because this was a prior high. Well, yeah, but it was a prior high because paper took a stand and they got pummeled, right? So it's like, it's not a coincidence that it came up to this exact area and failed. Again, even if you didn't take this trade, you know this area is important. You wait and you wait for your, you know, your TAS stuff. Let's look at that on TAS too. So this was, sorry, my, my uh, CRO chart's very slow. Um, yeah, so this was right here. So this was a TAS box that had drawn. So now you get the TAS box on the 30, you get the TAS box that had been there from, from, from overnight on the 60. And then you get the confirmation of a huge sell iceberg or buy iceberg that was wrong. Like this is putting everything together. This is such a, a high probability trade where, I mean, and then, you you know, again, you're in it and in, in, in the book map on that, on that move down, it actually did not show a real, a real solid reason to get out. Right. So if you're short, you're, if you're just using book map by itself, you may not be getting out right here. You may be waiting for something like this, these outsized moves. But when you use TAS, that's, it drew a box, that's support, right? Came down here, this is overnight, but this is the 60 minute, but it drew a support for the 30. The point is you're using this stuff together. And again, I wouldn't be showing you the TAS stuff if it wasn't it's a very close second behind book map. And again, when you can put it all together, you have all the information in, in my opinion. Um, let's look at a couple other markets here. Any questions on that stuff, Bruce? Since we're doing live now, I just want to make sure I don't miss anything. <laughs> oh, oh, by the way, before you say anything, I didn't even see this when I was explaining this. Look, so this was the dumb money being wrong. So now you get a stop run of, what was this? 1,200 stops. This was this move. Immediately below it, here's your, so the, back to that question, where do you get in? I get in, once I see the stops, again, the the, Example I gave from Friday, the unemployment number, you saw this type of stop run and then it held, it stayed above it. You never saw any red. This one was, again, I say 70, 80% of the time, it's the dumb money with nothing behind it. And the minute it gets below, so boom, pop up, it's immediately below, that's your signal that, okay, there's there's not real buying behind that. This was a bunch of retail, you know, dumb money. The minute I see some aggressive selling, I'm in. You're in right here, again, same area as this, you're in again, you risk above this area and you catch, uh, you know, this is a six point trading county. I wouldn't doubt if it came all the way back down here. So again, you're seeing why these are, this is what's also great about this is you're not getting 30 signals in a day. You're getting two, three, four, five, maybe in a day. Right now, up until this point, there's only been two really big. So this was 600, I don't, I mean, and it was a stopping point. Again, look how powerful this is, <laughs> it comes down here. Paper tried to stop it, 600 icebergs. That was the exact stopping point, right? Again, you start to use this this stuff with what you look at or with TAS, it's, you're gonna be lethal. I, mean, I, I keep saying the same thing, but it, you're seeing it. Let's, let's go to the other markets. I mean, I can do this all day long. I have literally, these are all my markets that it works in. S&P, NASDAQ, crude, gold, bonds, beans, corn, wheat, cattle, hogs, which I've never traded, but I've, I'm about to, because I've seen it work about 50 times already. Euro, silver, pound, yen, Aussie, copper, NG. If that's not enough for you to stay engaged in the in the marketplace, then you, you need to find another line of work. Um, you can see here, this is crude. Comes down, huge selling, huge dumb money selling stop orders. This was so crude, if you see over 100-ish, um it's a lot what was this that was never that wasn't over 100 but it was it was decent again also you also want to judge it by 
relativeness for the day, right? So again, this didn't hit my my thresholds that I would have been completely like engaged, but I would be paying attention, right? Up until this point, this was these are the biggest stop runs. Here's one. Here's a dumb money stop run. Immediately wrong. Boom. Here's a dumb money stop run. Here's another one. Immediately wrong. You couple that with buy icebergs that the dumb money selling into. Right? I call this the double whammy. That's the, that's the exact area that it rejected. And it's not a coincidence when it came back and retested, it's the exact area that it rejected. I hope you guys are starting to see the power of knowing where this, where the big money fires off in conjunction with what you use or, you know, TAS. Let's see what that looks like in TAS real time. You know, so again, these things are coming down. I don't necessarily want to be long because when these things are stacking down, I'm, I'm looking for shorts. But again, if you're short, that could be, this is a good area that you may want to take some off because it rejected. Again, if it does this and it keeps going, you're golden. You, then you just hold it, right? But when you start seeing the, the initiative buying come in, you know this is relevant and you're in. Comes back, fails, back up. So now this is area. Again, based on TAS, what TAS is showing me here, where we're stepping down with boxes on the 10, we're below support on the 30, we're below support on the 60. You, me, you should be as well <laughs> leaning short. So again, when this area breaks, you can bet your ass this thing is gonna sell off. I, I, I'd be willing, I'm, I'm saying it's gonna be 80, 90% that you're gonna get a significant move down, right? So hopefully hopefully that makes sense, right? So that's being on, this, on the right side of the market. If, you're, if you don't have this information, you may be thinking to yourself, well, yeah, we're really, we're really oversold. I, I wanna get long here. How many, how many people get run over doing that, right? So it's like, when you see all this, you're like, wait a second, hold on here. I don't wanna be long anything. I wanna be waiting for my signal to get short when it gets below here or, things frozen up, or you wait for, an area. so this is actually, this is gonna have been an area that you got short. So say you're looking for areas to get short. Here's the move back up right around where this blew through this, or stopped at this liquidity the first time, blew through, which was also, um, where the stop run ran off. So this general area would be a good area if you're looking for short. Again, it does, I mean, this wasn't great, but right now, if now it's just range trading. If it comes back again and you see something like this, great short signal if it fails, right? If it doesn't, then you get out of your short. Things like that, you, you're seeing, I know it sounds like I'm all over the place, but I'm really not. If you're using this information, you can make such better judgments. And again, you watch by the end of the day, if this gets below, this 37.96 area, I'd be willing to bet and be willing to bet, meaning I'm putting a trade on that is betting that we are going lower, especially because now I have the confirmation with the TAS stuff. Um, gold, not a lot. Uh, 40 stops, 53, not a lot there. Again, some days you're just not going to have setups in certain markets. That's why you have 14 different markets that you're scrolling through. Again, Book maps in the process um, of coming up with some, some kind of indicators when you're getting outsized moves. Again, it's not as easy as it looks because, yeah, when I have it scrunched like this, it's, you should be able to put, uh, you know, an alert line. But the problem is this is like based over, um, you know, a series of prices and time. So when you spread it out, like that doesn't look so easy, does it? So it's that it's not so easy to put a um, to put alerts like you have when you scrunch it, right? So this is what I'm doing all day long. I'm actually never really even going this close into the market because all you're going to do is confuse yourself. You're going to confuse yourself with the with the orders, with the resting liquidity, and you're going to confuse yourself with this stuff. That's why I'm usually max scrunched, right? So this is literally max scrunched. And now you can start to see, look at this. You, know, you wouldn't think a 25 lot by iceberg was a lot. Well, it certainly was in silver today where they tried to buy it. So it came up, they tried to buy it, failed. Well, look, look where it retested, the exact area. Guess who's getting out of their 25 that they tried to buy? The same, probably the same people that got run over. And then that was the area that failed. I just shown like three or four instances where you see the area, it retests, and then it goes, it keeps going. Again, you have this information, you have information 99% of the traders don't have. Copper. Oh, I've never liked copper. Um, I'm starting to gain some interest in it because this, this is starting to look like it works. Again, here we go. Again, this is all live, this is today. This is selling, you get, again, don't concern yourself with, oh wait, well, why would 50 copper icebergs be a lot? 
It doesn't matter what the chart tell you it's a lot. This is the most of the day. This is the biggest iceberg of the day right here. Buying, rejected. Sell stops right into that area. So it was a double whammy. It was the buy, sell stops into, into the dumb money, into the smart money. It worked temporarily, right? So say you decided to get long. I don't even have Taz up here to make my decision. Just purely off order flow, you get long. You say to yourself, okay, I'm out if it clears this, or I'm getting short. So look what happened. Here's the area. Look what happened when it got below that area. Go on. Oh, look at this. Not a coincidence. This is where it retested and failed. Again, you know the areas. I mean, I hope that I, I, it can't get any more clear. I mean, this is like five or six just today alone. Um, natural gas. Here's another example. Sell iceberg. This time paper was right, right? So you had this wasn't this wasn't this is okay. Stop run here, boom. Um, you get a sell iceberg right here. This price here. This is the exact stopping area. It broke, retested, gone. Right? Same here. Now they tried to now they tried to buy it. So this is a perfect example where it doesn't matter whether paper's wrong or right. You want to know the area, right? Here they they were right. There was a big sell iceberg. Here they tried to buy it. They were it was immediately below. You're getting short when they're wrong, and you can put your stop. You can put it here, or you can put it above here, where this one was. Again, this is just telling you, and I'm not even, you know, again, I'm not even looking at Taz to make those decisions. Then when you when you add in your bar charts, which you look at, or the or the the areas with these boxes, again, these they're all confluent. That was 1790. So this first one was 1792. The second one that fired off was around 1790 ish. Um, or this is 1792 to 96. So in this, in this is right around here. So this is right at the right at resistance. Once it accepted back inside the test box, gone. Accepted back in the 60 minute, gone. 10 minute. You could see the power in both these products used together. Is what I'm trying to show you here. Um, a couple more corn. Uh, I mean, uh, corn annoys me. It's like watching paint dry. We'll move on. Uh, beans. This was actually a good. I pointed this out in the room after actually I, I went on live. I, I saw that someone asked about it at the time. This was a really good area to get long. So if you see this here, um, look, look at this. Look at the buy icebergs that fired off. So here, here are the sell stops into the buy icebergs. This was the stopping point. The minute you see blue again, back to that original question. You're waiting again. This doesn't mean this is going to stop every time. It could keep going. If you like, I showed you with the ES example from unemployment. Then you then you get short and you put your stop above here. This one showed you a long setup where you see the buying. You can get if you want to get long. Again, I'm not even looking at tasks. If you want to get long, you get long as soon as you see aggressive buying. You put your stop right below here. You catch a you know a three three and a half point move or cent move in soybeans. Then when it gets below, here we go. Oh, it rejected. Then when it finally gets through, you see all these sellers engage, right? It's not a coincidence. This is this. I mean, look at this. <laughs> gets below, retest, gets below, retest, sells off. This area is the most meaningful area of the day because of this. And this is exactly where the market is rejecting. Taz wise, see what it looks like. Again, I have no idea what most of these look like because I've been talking all morning. Um, same thing. You should be in your mind, based on what Taz is telling you, you should have been looking for shorts, right? So you saw, so say you were short, and you saw that big buy iceberg that I showed you. Um, you know, if you're not looking for longs, and I wouldn't have personally been looking for longs based on that task chart, I'm waiting for a short. My signal is, based on those all those charts, those task charts, you know, stacking down, I'm waiting for it to break 64 and then I'm in, right? So right now I'd be short and see what happens again. Doesn't matter if I'm wrong. I'm losing a couple cents. Big deal. If I'm right, I might get 20. That's the whole point of this. You get to control your risk, and you, your areas are legitimate. It's not just you saying, "Oh, I need to stop out here because I can't lose $300." You're actually using uh, it, this is evidence based. You're using your stops based on this. If this gets back above here, you're out. And sometimes it does. Again, majority of the time it won't. <laughs> but if you lose, you're losing three cents. If you're right, this thing may drop. You know, 10 cents, which is a huge move in, in ridiculous, boring grains. Bonds. There's a, there's a couple of good examples here from the day. Um, so in bonds, you're going to see a lot. 
it's actually very, this is one of the most reliable for the stops and icebergs. But what you see a lot is it violates a little bit almost all the time. And then when it finally goes, then it goes, right? So you see right here, you see the stop run, and then it kind of comes below. And then when it gets above, another stop run, it holds, right? So a lot of times what I'm, what I'm saying is when you see these areas, a lot of the times it'll move a little bit below that area. But when you see it get below, not saying you can't get short here, because you're only risking a little bit, but if you're looking for longs, you wait. And then when it finally gets back above, you know, you, you engage. But my, my point is, if you got long here, don't get scared out if it just goes a couple ticks below this area. Most markets will hold the exact area. Bonds are, bonds and gold are a little quirky, uh, where it'll go a little bit below or above the area. And then, and then when it gets back above the second time, then it's gone, right? So it's like, boom, stop, run, boom, stop, run, holds, holds. Here's some buy icebergs. So there's heavy market selling right here in a, some some icebergs that want it. I've noted noticed in bonds, um, this was so over 200 is a lot. I've noticed that the, the smart money is more right than wrong. Meaning you start seeing this. This is a, the minute you see how see how this moved a little bit below. This is the exact thing I was talking about here. So the buy icebergs were here and it moved a little bit below, and then then it got above. And now again, I would be leaning long just by looking at this. Let's see what Taz looks like. You can see Taz, this is screaming long, right? So now, now you have your confirmations. You just saw this, the iceberg area, which is right here, right? Right there, which is right where this is breaking out. This is a long signal because it's above. This is about to break out. So again, this is all confluent. This is all lining up. You're getting your ducks in a row. If this thing goes, I'm going to promise you this thing is going to go for a while, right? And again, now you're risking knowing that information that you found in here and in TAS, you're risking below this this last low right here. So you'd be risking, you know, right around 172.30. Now you're long, right? You would have been long probably right in here, which is it's right here right now. If you want to get long, put your stop right here. I would not be surprised to see this trade up to this resting liquidity. So there's some, uh, there's a bunch of live examples. Any questions, Bruce? Uh, yes. Um, so um, trying to type away here um, furiously and answer a bunch of questions. Uh, but uh, some of the other ones that are, are very specific here for you. Um, first off, can you, sh can you show your settings uh, for the iceberg and um, uh, stop? Yeah. Yep. Um, so again, don't pay attention to this per se. I mean, this is live. What's really happening? Obviously, nothing is going off. It's this stuff that you want to pay attention to. Um, I mean, this is good when it's really happening, but I think it looks cool. But it, other than looking cool, it doesn't really help me much. Um, so my iceberg. So the way you get into these settings. So first of all, this is an add-on, right? So you have to get the book map. You have to have the newest version to be able to get these volume dot settings where you show the volume dot delta 3D bubbles. So get the newest version. And then when you get book map. Um, you want to go to the uh, bookmap marketplace and Bruce will put, a, put all that in, I'm sure. Uh, and then you go to the SI uh, indicator, the MBO um, bundle. I think you know, that's a separate subscription, but again, that it's the most powerful thing I've ever seen. It's well worth it. Uh, then when you get that in, into your charts, you get, they give you step-by-step step information, how do you, how you import this in your chart, the, um, the API files, which is up here, which I'll show you in a second. Um, my settings are here. So, Again, I changed the colors. You can you can change. I think they're different colors. I know definitely uh, this one. We haven't even gone into this today. Uh, I might go. I might do this one in my next webinar with you guys. Uh, I think it's June 18th um, with Futures IO. I might go in the liquidity tracker. But anyway, th these are my settings for for the stops and icebergs, and it's exponential. Again, go to um, this just Google Book Map uh, SI indicator. And then you'll you'll find this blog post, and it explains to you what exponential sum, exponential reset. I don't use sum; it's basically adding it up as the day goes on. Actually, I'll show you what it looks like. I, I just put it into the chat that that article. Uh, so if okay. you guys are interested, it, all yeah, the settings so you, are in there, uh, so uh, it, it should answer your questions. Okay, so watch when I put sum. You're gonna I have I'm changing it on a different screen, but you're gonna see here. So that's what sum for the stops look like. That's what sums for the icebergs looks like. That's not helpful for the way I trade or what I want to see because it's kind of adding them up. It's summing the total for the day. Um, I don't use it that way. You can come up with your own strategies. Again, this is very, very powerful information. 
I want to see when stuff's firing off real time and make my decision on that, right? So that's that's what happens here. And again, I scrunch it down almost all the way. Um, there, when you do get this, be aware um, that you know, if you bring up your charts in the morning, some of these markets, it doesn't, because this is like beta, they just are releasing this. Um, and you'll gladly put up with this, it's kind of a nuisance sometimes where you're not gonna see this populate right away. You literally just have to come here, check it, uncheck it, and then it'll populate for you. Um, so what I'm saying is don't be, don't freak out if you bring this up and start emailing support. All my SI indicator isn't working. Just go check and recheck. Again, this is brand new. They're working out the kinks you will gladly put up with that one little nuisance for the information that, that this thing gives you. Again, this is the most powerful thing I have ever seen in futures trading. Um, any other settings that you want me to go over? I mean, that, that's basically what I use. Um, it, no, uh, the, um, uh, let me get to some of these questions here. Um, it's, uh, it's not, a whole, not a whole lot of questions here for you actually. Um, but Tom says, though, you're doing a great job here. Uh, very, very um, helpful webinar here. Uh, so he wanted me Thank to re you. relay that to you. Uh, and, um, um, you know, a lot of questions about, like, um, so uh, Thomas has been asking about um, uh, reading volume and reading and, you know, ma making trading decisions here. And I've been, I've been trying to answer him uh, in, in the chat. Uh, re regarding like, you know, it's it's about the context of this auction and the insight that you're getting from understanding this auction. Now, it, you know, the transactions actually take place um, and it, you know, in the in the current market and and it's historical as well. But you understand the context of those transactions and what unfolded there. And uh, uh, and then, you know, the order book is actually forward. I mean, that's like probably the most forward looking uh, thing there is like uh, the conditions of the current order book is is telling you the conditions of the auction uh, skews in that order book etc but you know being able to see it in hindsight or not hindsight being able to see it in this historical view uh, you can you can start to understand the the activities uh, in that auction and and players activities of course it's not a hundred percent but I guess the question is um, for you Scott is uh, uh, you know, you've been answering it, I guess, in some questions or some areas where, well, you see the buyers, you see the uh, stop run to the upside, but now you see sellers start to come in the other side. So what you're reading there is like in this um, uh, ES example, uh, that that big uh, spike to the upside above, a, a, you know, the, the pre-market area, tons of stops, and you see sellers come in on the other side. Now, you know that those are stops. And you also know that I'm looking for sellers to drive it, and it's going to be have to be powerful selling to drive it back lower. Um, so, well, well uh, I, I don't, I don't know if I agree with the powerful selling. I know that it needs powerful buying. If 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 this if this stop run fires off, uh -huh. and it's immediately below it, that that tells me that there's no powerful behind buying behind it because this is what this is what powerful. Where's my? Uh, I lost my. Um, hold on one second. Just hold that thought. This is what powerful buying looks like, right? Here, right? This is a stop run with buying behind it. It never, I mean, look at the difference between this stop run, this stop run, this stop run that held, this stop run versus this stop run. What do you see different? It's immediately below it. So there's nothing, this is the stop run here, and it's immediately below that area. There is no, nobody engaging to drive it higher. I mean, nobody meaning real money. This to me is dumb money, the retail trader. And again, I'm not making fun of anybody because I'm a retail trader now, right? My point is you are not as informed, I am not as informed up until now anyway, <laughs> what, of you know what what's really going on as far as you know where you need to put stops and anything else. <clears throat> so this is, you know, you don't know as much as, we don't know as much as the firms know, obviously, even with this information, I don't think we know, but we are much more educated on these areas and where what's right, what's wrong. My point is, this is not a follow through. If you see that, if you see big buy stops, it's not an automatic fate, you just sell it, right? I mean, I, I bet you, if you just sold every stop run, I bet you would be profitable. I, I don't know how much, but the point is you wanna see the stop run, you wanna see it fail, 
then you want to see initiation, then you're in, right? So I don't necessarily agree that you have to see heavy selling come in because the people, you know, this would, I, I want to see heavy buying showing me that there's something behind just the retail trader puking their positions, right? And I've given multiple examples today on that alone. And again, I mean, look at this. This is just, this is not a coincidence. Here's your, this, we showed this earlier. It comes up here. Here's the stops, goes a little higher. Now you're saying, if you're looking short, boom. The minute you see this come in, you're short, your stops here. Now you ride this out. You ride it out until you see something in the volume and or test, like I've been talking about all day. It's like, when you really break it down, it's really not that difficult. And that's good. That's a good thing for people because the more difficult you make your trading, the harder it is, the less decision you make. It's the paralysis by, paralysis by analysis, right? You want to have, I know this looks like a lot like with the task charts too, but this is pretty basic and simple too. I mean, the algorithm behind drawing this boxes is quite intricate and it's, it's pretty incredible. Um, I'm not even going to go into the the Taz, I'll show you this real quick if everyone wants their mind blown right quick. This is the, this is the, um, this is the, their, their kind of indicator is called the edge. You can read about it on their site, but this is a whole other subject. The point is there's, it's, there's a lot of intricate stuff behind this, this drawing, these drawings and how, how they're produced. But common sense wise, it's as clear as day. Like you, you do not have to be some, some mastermind, you know, rocket scientist to understand you know, again, I always use the example. I bring my daughter in here, my nine-year-old. Cece, who, who's who's winning here? When, when should I when should I sell? Okay, blue is blue is buy, red is sell. When should I sell? Well, Daddy, you want to sell when you see the red come, right there. Cece, okay, here are the boxes. Do you see the, these red lines? When do you think I should sell? Well, you want to sell if it doesn't go through the red red line, Dad. Right. So it's like that. The point I'm trying to make is you, there, there should be hope for everybody as a retail trader when we have this kind of information, right? It should be, you guys should be like kids on, a, on Christmas Eve now watching this stuff, waiting to, to implement this going forward, was my point. Yeah, excellent, excellent. I mean, uh, uh, as well, I mean, like uh, one of the things that I, I have been saying in, in the webinars that I maybe brings more clarity to, to um, uh, folks here, like uh, uh, that now, you know, Scott's reading the order flow at certain areas, but now he knows the order types as well at those areas. So that's a, a level of transparency that we've never had before. Uh, you know that, that that's that stop run, who who uses stops? Well, retail traders use stops. Why? Because they don't have big or deep pockets. Uh, they, right. they protect themselves by using right. stops, right? Who uses icebergs? Is there anyone in here? I'm sure there are uh, uh, people in here using iceberg orders. Okay, but I, if you if you are, uh, I'm sure that you're you have a big account because right. Why, if there's anyone in here using thousand lot icebergs, they have a, a very big account. <laughs> exactly. So you understand now, due to the type of order that is transacting in some of these areas, you also understand the type of player that is using that order. That's pretty pretty amazing transparency. Sure is, and um, it's what the big money's had for all this time, and now we have it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bottom line. Um, let's see, uh, Adam has a, a long question here. I, I don't know if I quite understand it, but it, basically if you start to anticipate the big money uh, and, and their funds, is, can they like somehow, will they be changing their strategies? Um, uh, you know, I, I don't know how long this might last or, it, you know, this kind of edge uh, that we're getting right now. Um, and how, um, how you maybe have seen that or in, you know, your experiences. The only thing they can really do right now um, is that they call them, and again, if you go in the, the CME website, that the area I was showing you, just Google CME MBO info and you can read about it. There's there's two types of icebergs. There are native, which are um, you know, the ones that are actually put through the CME, and then there's um, synthetic. So the synthetic are put in to the into the market by a third party, and they break it down in a way where it's not easy, easily readable unless, unless you have book map. And that's actually what they had an ice, iceberg indicator even before the MBO information came out that was basically reading the way the orders were coming in. They can tell your icebergs and you know, and those included synthetic icebergs. So again, there's two different types of icebergs, but the point is when you have book map, they, they are so in tune with, with their algorithms that they know you're gonna know where everything is, right? You're gonna know what, what areas are relevant. That's the most important thing is knowing what areas are relevant. And you're looking at a chart today, you know this area is 
very this 32.9 to 32.11 area is very, very relevant. If it gets through here, it's gone. If it holds, we're probably going back down to the lows, right? That is, and then again, I'm not telling you how to trade. I'm telling you, I'm not telling anybody to trade like me. You don't want to trade like me. You want to trade what makes sense to you. I've said this in every webinar, but when you start to incorporate this real-time information, what's really happening in the market with what you're looking at, whatever you're looking at, I don't care if it's Fibonacci, if it's GAN or Elliott Wave or whatever the hell else people are using that, you know, it doesn't matter. If you can tie in what's really happening with what makes sense to you, you're going to be a much, much, much better trader. Right, exactly, exactly. So, so, uh, and and that gets to to the point of like um, uh, uh, trying to answer this question that we all have this question. That's why I'm I'm kind of covering it in detail uh, that Thomas has been asking about. Well, how do you know? And it's like, well, you don't know, but you can you can have a, a pretty amazing insight uh, by looking at this and and start to um, uh, look at much much higher probability. Uh, and, and potential for these moves to take place when you start to understand the order flow and the order types within them. Right, and, and when you, how do you know? How you know is when you you get book map and you watch it happen about a thousand times in all these markets, then, then that's how you know. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that, that's the point. I mean, that's why I'm putting out the educational thing for people that don't know, they can kind of speed up their learning curve instead of watching these markets like I've had for the last two and a half months and to find out all the thresholds. But the, the reason you know is because when you watch something happen that many times in a row, you know, right? And the thing is, it's so crystal clear because volume was is what drives markets. And that is exactly why it works in every single market because volume drives price. And that's just all you're doing is you're just using volume, at, like I said, in different levels, in different markets to base your decisions on what, you're, what else you're looking at. But again, you watch it enough and you see the same pattern, just like anything else, anything else you're using. Any, any trades you're putting on off of bar charts or any of your indicators, all you're doing is trading off a pattern, right? A pattern that makes sense to you. This is a pattern. This is a pattern that is really happening, really occurring, that really makes sense because it's actually happening. Uh, yeah, Scott, in fact, like, I mean, you, you um, it just reminds me here, like, uh, um, and I'm not trying to plug you, plug you here, but like, uh, uh, you, you know, you've you've created uh, patterns, uh, you've given them names, and and then you've offered it now ed educational course on our bookmap marketplace. So right, I don't know exactly. If you, if you want to cover and that, that, that's like, not even I mean, that's even before this information, right? So it's like those are a couple of patterns um, that that I put up there. You know, there's like a NQ course put up on my partner Nick, who's an expert in trading, an expert in bookmap, reading bookmap. But now, you know, going forward all my new things that I put out there to help traders um, is going to incorporate the most powerful information I've ever seen, like I said. And starting with, again, this week, I'm going to put out something. I've had so many people ask me for it, so I finally, I'm almost done with it. It's going to just help you immediately know in every one, every one of these markets, you're going to know the thresholds, what's a lot in gold, what's a lot in beans, what's a lot in euro, stops, icebergs, things like that. And then, and then literally specific setups, like I said, the, uh, the double whammy. There's one dumb and dumber. There's one stop and go. There's uh, there's a, there's like six or seven of them. Again, it's just to make trading easier for you guys, where you can bring this information up immediately. You can be brand new to the book map and just look for these setups, and you're going to be efficient when you when you tie them into your areas that make sense to you for what you're looking at on your charts. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so. Uh, uh, so I put again into the uh, in the chat there, guys, um, all of Scott's contact information. So if you're interested in reaching out to him, uh, you've got his website, you've got his email, you've got his Twitter um, and uh, his uh, trading room with the uh, uh, We Trade desk. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, most of the questions here, um, if you have any last minute questions here for um, for Scott, uh, most of them have been re revolving around uh, uh, the kind of uh, you know what's needed for MBO, et cetera, stuff like this. Um, so I don't see any um, specific questions here, Scott. Um, well, the other thing I wanted to point out here quickly. So you know, I, I'm in here again. I've had so many requests for the live trading room, and I teamed up with Taz. Obviously, you can tell him which I love it. I love Steve, and he's him. Like I'm learning from him every day, and I'm just getting more, more, more powerful as a trader. But what they do is um, he archives all all of the sessions too. So whether you catch me live or on or on a recording, 
Uh, I mean, it's everything's recorded, so you can go back in case you're not in front of the screen that day in live, and it just enhances your learning, right? So you can bring it up and look at, like I'm doing right now, showing you the live market action. That's what I'm doing in there, you know, twice a day, three days a week. Um, so you'll be able to you'll be able to go back and watch rewatch the stuff as well. Right. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Jason's asking if you need a runner. Um, he'd be happy to uh, to work with you. <laughs> well, considering that's how I started at the Board of Trade, it's not a fun job. I was making two hundred dollars a week as a runner for the five year option pit, and it's <laughs> probably one of the worst jobs. I mean, not, don't get me wrong; it's still you're still down there, but um, it, it's you're like the lowest form of life as a runner at the Board of Trade. So you you don't want to be my runner, especially <laughs> because I sit at a desk. You basically be getting me coffee, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, uh, Jason says he's willing to do that. Um, so let's see, Tom has another question here. Uh, you've taken uh, long off the recent, would you have taken a long off the recent spike down uh, on the stop indicator on the ES around 12.15 Eastern time? Um, right now? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Um, so um, about 10 minutes ago, uh, looks like. So the I mean, would I would take it along? No, I, I'm again, I'm still short until this proves me wrong. I mean, again, this has to be, not that you just throw on a short right here, right? You want to wait for a relevant area if it comes back up here or if it breaks. I'm not long, you know, looking at if we look at TAS quickly, let's see what that shows. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're looking for longs, here's the point of control on the 10 minute where right at the point of control on the 30 minute and we're right at the point of control of the 60 minutes so if you're looking for longs this is not a bad place i need to see okay yeah this is good this is obviously very important information to know where we are in market profile wise with the task boxes but then i want to confirm it by something in the volume right so back to the original question i'm not really seeing anything yet to get long right if i'm going to get long i'm waiting to get long up here when we get through this area from earlier this area from the stops I'm long here. I'm not long right here. Especially, you don't want to really be initiating trades at the BWAP or which is confluent today with the point of controls, because the point of all the point of control is for people not familiar with uh, market profile. That's just where the most trades have, has occurred. So you're asking to get whipsawed out of your mind, put initiating trades for no reason near the point of control, right? That doesn't mean you can't do it if you see something in the volume, right? But I don't see right now. There's nothing in the volume. Right. Look, I mean, look right here. Do you see anything? I see a small, tiny stop run, 319. That's not a ton. Um, and it's, I mean, you can use that actually. If it breaks through here, you probably get short. My bias today is I think we're going back down here. But again, I, that doesn't mean just throw on a blind short right here, per se. But I'm only getting long if we get, get above this. Is what I is what. I, or, or again, this is the benefit of using bookmap. If we start coming down here and then you see some huge buy iceberg anywhere again this is why you watch the markets then you can say okay now i'm getting long right you got to wait for it you don't just you're not just getting long at a line on a chart you want to see something in the real-time volume to initiate your long or short right um so another another question here um is about uh how you're able to trade um so many different markets um well you know like I said in the beginning of the thing, my, my my gift is fast mental processing, right? So, I mean, this is this is kind of a different way of fat, fast mental processing. I'm able just to funnel through these, like you know, kind of just looking for relevant areas. So I use my TAS just to get kind of get a bias of what the market should be doing, and then I just funnel through to see, hey, is there anything firing off in in crude? Is there anything firing off in E mini? Is there anything firing off in silver? So I basically just scroll back and back back and forth through here. But also knowing which way I want to be leading based on the market profile from the task. Does that okay. make sense? I hope. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, uh, great. Well, I, I think we've answered all the questions that we've gone now for about an hour and a half. Um, so uh, let me just uh, uh, paste back in here, guys, uh, all of uh, his contact information if you're interested in reaching out to Scott uh, and. Um, uh, oh, and then, you know, I mean, there are some specials there that he's offering uh, for Bookmap if you're interested in buying it out. Um, you would need to, if you're interested in this SI tracker, you're going to need to, um, uh, you know, go to the Bookmap marketplace. It's sold separately. Uh, the reason being um, is, uh, I just need to explain this 
uh, rather quickly that um, you know we, we're selling bookmap on our website or through that link from Scott you'll get special offers longer term special offers uh, through his link uh, but then uh, we've opened up the bookmap marketplace so let me explain uh, the marketplace is for third-party vendors okay? we've also developed for it as well this SI tracker is something we've developed in there now it only works with CME futures and rhythmic okay everything else it does not work with uh, and uh, uh, there it is. Uh, Scott's bringing it up now. And um, so this is, um, it's a separate thing, right? Now you can buy, uh, like Scott has some products in here. Um, uh, Walter, who's presenting tomorrow, has a product in here. Uh, you know, so the it's, there's a lot of low hanging fruit in here, guys, that, you know, you can develop your own add-on indicators and sell them in here as well. So it's Java based API and that we're opening it up. That's the whole idea. It's like we've had so many requests for so many different things to do and add into Bookmap. Here, you can do it. Uh, you can do, you can add your own proprietary uh, add ons and automated trading strategies within here. Okay. That's the whole concept. All right. Um, okay. So uh, uh, if there's uh, no more questions, then. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Scott. Like we're getting a, a lot of uh, a lot of thanks uh, and appreciation um, from uh, the insights uh, in your webinar here. No problem. Again, um, I'm here to help. I go to my site if you want to contact me. You put my information up. I do the mentoring. If people want one-on-one -on -one stuff, um, or I'm in that chat room. That chat room is that's going to be golden. I mean, people finally get to hear me live, kind of like I did today. You know, three times a week, twice a day. So um, I highly encourage you to. to you know, get in here um, as well. And then, you know, if you if you if you go to Taz Market Profile, Scott Polsini, you get um, you know, if you want to add Taz, there's awesome discounts for not only the Taz indicators, but then the chat room as well, uh, the trade desk stuff. So, um, you know, again, I, I want to I'm going to make millions of dollars again. It's right around the corner, but I also want to help people too. I, I just again, I have a, such an animosity towards the algorithms, towards the big funds. It's time for us to strike back. It's the bottom line. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Um, well, yeah, thank you very much, Scott. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, the next uh, webinar with uh, Futures IO, uh, and uh, that'll be uh, June 18th, guys. If you're if you're interested in that, um, and uh, Scott will pre be presenting over over there. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Any last words, uh, Scott? Uh, no. I mean, I, I hope today was. I, I think it was helpful that I went. Um, get out of this real quick. I was able to show a lot of live examples. I mean, that's what traders want. They don't want cherry picking, even though any, anything, any webinars in the past that I've shown, there's been no cherry picking. I try to show like literally within the day or two. But when you're seeing this stuff real time, I mean, if you're not a believer looking at this and seeing how powerful this is, then I'm not sure what you're looking at. I mean, this is, again, I've been in the industry for 20 years. I know what I've been through the ringer. I've been rich. I've been poor. I've been, you know, I've been everything in between. So it's like, you can learn a lot from my, experiences and you don't need to go through the 20 years of trials and tribulations with you know all these tools now on your side and, i mean this is it again it's not like i'm a advocate i, I don't i don't work for book map right I, I do this stuff because i'm so grateful for this information and taz and i'm so grateful for for what they provide me to be back in the game if not i'd still be doing medical sales right and it's not fun working with doctors on a daily basis trust me <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, let's, we'll end it with that, I think. Um, but, <laughs> not, but, not that anything against doctors, don't get me wrong. It's just, you know, especially when they don't know my history, they kind of think I'm some peon sales guy and it, it kind of hurts my pride a little bit. But other than that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, guys, this is recorded. It will be up on our YouTube channel later uh, in the day. Just uh, search for Bookmap um, on YouTube and uh, it'll be in the uh, Pro Trader webinar series um uh, uh playlist there and you'll you'll see it so it, it takes some hours here for the uh the webinar to parse and then we'll we'll put it up okay uh thanks very much scott as as always uh fantastic uh, presentation awesome and i'll see you back on uh, june 18th looking forward to that one too excellent all right thank you everybody and uh we'll catch up another time okay thanks bye bye